So this is not your first time at the ASCAP Expo. You've been here before. Yeah, I've been privileged to be here. I think this is my, maybe my third or fourth. Yeah, so it's kind of an old pro. I sort of know my way around the building and where to go. Oh, yeah, this is an old hat for you. So tell me a little bit about um, some of your previous Expo panels that you were on. You know, it's been a, it's been a little bit of everything. I mean, some some of them specifically for songwriters who produce, um, and some have been more on the technology side of things and how we utilize, you know, technology and computers and keyboards and all that stuff. So, um, today should be pretty fun. You know, I know the different panels that are going to be on there. I mean, I think we'll sort of bring a lot of different perspectives to you know, I guess how we create and, and why and what we do. You know. Yeah, the We Create Music panel is going to be really exciting. Um, have you ever met any of your fellow panelists before? No, I have not. No, I'm excited to meet them. Yeah, it's going to be great. So you, um, you're a Los Angeles native. I am. Yeah, tell me a little bit about the music scene here in Los Angeles and the kind of energy surrounding the music here. Well, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty diverse and obviously like Los Angeles, it's very spread out. So you kind of have to know where to search and... And obviously, uh, you know, Silver Lake and Los Feliz has a scene, and West Hollywood and Santa Monica, and maybe different parts of the West Side. Um, even in the Valley, I mean, I find that there's a lot of, you know, cool up and coming bands. Um, I live out near the Calabasas area, and, you know, there's been a few bands that have come out of that area, you know, um, in the past. So it's just sort of because LA is so spread out, you kind of just have to know, you know, where and when to check things out. But it's pretty, you know, it's very diverse, just like Los Angeles. You know. Yeah, definitely. And what was your experience like coming up as a musician in Los Angeles? Yeah, you know, I was really, I was really, really fortunate. Um, my dad is a musician, so ever since I can remember, there were all these musicians hanging around the house. Um, and then once I got into it uh, myself, I had friends that I went to school with, and you know, instantly started bands. And from there, you meet other guys who play in bands. You know, as you start to gig around. Um, I went to a high school in uh, Culver City called Hamilton High School, which has a great music program. And I got to meet guys like the Abel Boreal Jr., who's the drummer. I'm a bass player, and he was the drummer that I got to play with every day, which is awesome. Um, and you know, at that, that school, met a lot of amazing musicians and formed everything from you know rock bands to jazz groups, and you know, got to explore all kinds of different types of music. So it was pretty. Again, it was pretty diverse, and met a lot of really talented people at a pretty young age. So it helped my growth immensely. Yeah, that's really, really cool. And you've had a pretty diverse career. You're actually you've been a producer, you've been a musician, and now you've taken on a new role. You're working a little bit in A and R, but you're, you're combining that with production. Yeah, I think it's uh, well. Rob Cabal is now the president of Warner Brothers, and so to have a producer, musician, uh, running things, uh, it's sort of kind of, I guess, the way it, you know it had been done in the Atlantic days. And, you know, it passed. Uh, golden era of the record business where you had guys who could write songs, produce them, finding the talent and running the company. Um, and, uh, and so it's sort of, you know, with Rob there, Lenny uh, Warrenker is also a consultant there, a and consultant. So it's really exciting for me to sort of take on this position. I've never done an A&R gig before, but um, I, I feel like there's a lot of crossover in terms of what I do in the studio as a producer that will apply to that role. Um, but I'm excited to sort of learn from some of the greats and to be at such a, an amazing label like Warner Bros. with, with its uh, heritage and, and everything and all the uh, all the current and future artists that are going to be there. So yeah, it sounds like a really great opportunity to to create a you know a great bridge between the creative and the business elements of music. Which is exactly, and I feel like you know it's it's exciting that a record label is willing to include people who who are part of the creative process. Uh, as far as the writing and the producing and the playing, uh, to be within the building and helping make decisions on behalf of the artists and and, uh, and their careers, and I think it's you know it's a, it's, it's obviously a crucial sort of bridge there, you know, that we can kind of provide insight um, for people who are making marketing decisions and and, uh, and uh, different business decisions for the for the artist. Yeah, that sounds incredible. Um, tell me a little bit about how long you've been a member of ASCAP and how you came to join ASCAP. Well, um, I'm going to say it was somewhere around 14 years ago, 13, 14 years ago. And I was writing some music with an artist named Poe, who uh, at the time was on Atlantic Records. And a friend of mine who I was writing with uh, was a member of ASCAP. And he had, actually had a good, he had a good friend who was uh, 
who used to work at ASCAP. So he introduced me to Randy Grimmett, who at the time was basically, you know, I walked into ASCAP, with, you know, met Randy, Randy signed me up, and about 30 minutes, you know, went by, and next thing I know, I was an ASCAP member. So. Grimmett's a great guy. And it's amazing to see where Randy's gone in his career at ASCAP, and an amazing, amazing uh, guy as well. Very cool. So I'm kind of curious because you are now going to be in this A&R position and you're going to be um, mentoring people. Did you have someone who was a mentor to you when you were starting out? Did you work with yeah, I mean, throughout my, my musical journey I've had many different mentors, some as musicians, some as writers. Um, I was fortunate enough to get to work as a studio musician for a period of time as a bass player and uh, I got to work with Glenn Ballard. Uh, Matt Wallace is another amazing uh, producer, and T-Bone Burnett. Um, and then I met Dr. Dre, and Dre uh, is basically, I would say, first and foremost, the guy who sort of put me on the map as a writer and producer, and worked with him for the better part of 10, 11 years. Um, but I would say every producer that I've gotten to work with, I've stolen something from, or, or been uh, encouraged or guided by uh, in some form of fashion. These are all incredible mentors to Absolutely. have had. Yeah. Very fortunate. Um, let's see, you, since you've been to the Expo before many times and you've sort of had this experience, what do you think is the key to really maximizing your time at a, at a conference like the Expo? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's uh, obviously, yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, you know, drink lots of water, I think is a very crucial point. Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. Now, I think, you know, you kind of just have to know, you can be overwhelmed, obviously. You kind of just have to, you know, make a, sort of a, a list of, of what you're hoping to get out of it, you know, and and then, you know, organize your time based on where, where those panels are happening and what's going on. And, and uh, you know, I think it's also important, not only for the, for, to, to experience the panels, but to also interact as much as possible with the other uh, people here, you know, the other participants, because you never know who you might bump into, you know, the next great collaborator uh, for a number one hit. I mean, you just never know who might be sitting across from. So just being able to interact, I think, watching the panels is great. Obviously, hopefully there's some insight there that you can gain, but I feel like just the fact that you're bringing all these songwriters into one building is really where the value is, and, and hopefully meeting people that you can maybe interact with. I think it's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's great advice. Interacting and collaborating is, is absolutely at the heart of making great music. Absolutely. For sure. So, really quick before we let you go, on the topic of collaborating, who are you working with right now? What projects do you have going on? Well, uh, all my projects are obviously focused through Warner Brothers at this point. Uh, I did some co-writing and producing, and I'm also A&Ring uh, &R Michelle Branch's next record, which is really exciting. She's doing a pop record. Um, I'm in the middle of production with a, a, a band called Mastodon, who are you know a real heavy you know metal group that I'm excited about. Um, and yeah, those are the sort of the current things that I'm, I'm uh, a part of right now, and um, doing some co-writing for the next uh, Carrie Underwood record as well. Those are incredible projects. Yeah, very, very fun right now. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for coming by. It's so My great to have pleasure. you. We're really looking forward to your panel. All right, appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.